If you live in the areas shaded blue on this map and somewhat the area shaded green, you could be living on top of water. This is because the areas shaded blue and green here denote aquifers of the earth. So what are aquifers? Well, aquifers are regions of water that is trapped underground due to the water being able to move through the rocks. And water needs two different factors to be able to get into the ground. The rock or sediment needs to be porous, which means it has many small holes in it that the water can get trapped in. And it also needs to be permeable, which means that the water can move through the rocks as well. And so aquifers are formed through a combination of porosity and permeability. And water gets into these aquifers through a process named percolation, where rainwater or streams will just feed into the ground slowly. Now because aquifers consist of water that is moving through rocks, if you were to, let's say, dig down and try to see the aquifer, it wouldn't be just like a giant lake under the surface. It would just be a bunch of, I guess, wet rocks. Although there are some areas of aquifers where caves go into, and of course in those locations, they are like lakes. Now of all the water in the world, just 2.5% is fresh water. So that means only 2.5% of all the water in the world is easily safe for us to drink. Now, 68% of this 2.5% are from glaciers and ice caps. However, many of these glacier and ice caps are very hard to reach, obtain, and then melt into drinking water. And so this leaves 30% of that 2.5% as groundwater, which is actually where most of the water that we drink on a daily basis comes from. And so, in today's video, let's look at some of the world's aquifers. So probably the most well-known aquifer, at least here in America, is the Ogallala Aquifer, or the High Plains Aquifer. And this aquifer spans a huge area from South Dakota all the way down into Texas. And here is a map of the thickness of the water in 1997, so already 28 years ago. And so the thickest part of the aquifer is essentially in west central Nebraska in these counties that you can see here. And something I find really interesting is despite the aquifer being underground, you can actually see where the aquifer is on Google Maps. So if we zoom into that area of high thickness in Nebraska, we find this area of Nebraska named the Sand Hills. And these Sand Hills is a sandy region of Nebraska, and in between these Sand Hills are a bunch of patches of water. And these ponds are spring water ponds, which means that they get their water from the ground, or the Ogallala Aquifer. And so these ponds are purely maintained by the Ogallala Aquifer and rainwater. And I just find it really interesting that even though aquifers are a type of geography that is underground, they still make an impact on the surface of our planet. So as I mentioned previously, aquifers provide drinking water to much of the world. And the Ogallala Aquifer is no different. The Ogallala Aquifer is the source of 82% of the people living in the region of this aquifer here. And also, this aquifer is used to provide water to many of the farms in this area. And this is quickly depleting the water supply. It is estimated that since the 1950s, the irrigation of this area has depleted the aquifer by around 9%. Water gets into aquifers extremely slowly, as I mentioned before from the process of percolation, where water from rain or streams will slowly seep through the porous rocks and go into the aquifer. This means that if the water got depleted from the aquifer, it would take hundreds of thousands of years for the water to be replenished in this area. And this has created growing concern and action from these states in order to protect this aquifer. For example, the state of Oklahoma, which granted does not have that much space of the aquifer, provided irrigation permits to what the state measured would be sustainable. Also, Kansas and Colorado gave authority to different water management districts in their state to limit the water withdrawals during certain drought seasons. But that is all I'm going to be talking about for the Ogallala Aquifer. Now let's take a look at the Guarani Aquifer. 
The Guarani Aquifer, as you can see by this map, is an aquifer that takes up a large portion of the southern part of Brazil and parts of Uruguay, Argentina, and Paraguay. And this aquifer is the second largest aquifer in the world. It takes up an area of 460,000 square miles and is estimated to hold around 8,900 cubic miles of water. And a crazy fact about this aquifer is that if populations were to stay around the 7 billion people that the population was at when the study was made, this aquifer would be able to provide fresh water to everybody on Earth for around 1,600 years. The Guarani Aquifer is a much less well-known aquifer, but it still is extremely important to the countries that it falls under. The aquifer provides water to around 90 million people that live in the area. This means that it is extremely important to preserve this water source. However, there has been political debate between the four countries that this water falls under. You see, despite this aquifer carrying immense amounts of water, it is estimated that 80% of the extraction of this water is not sustainable. Because again, it's extremely slow for water to get into aquifers. Also, there are exposed parts of this aquifer in many of the streams and low-lying areas, and this creates the growing concern for pollution of the aquifer as well. And so, while not much is known about this aquifer, it is still extremely significant to the people who live above it. And I hope I was able to shed some light on this aquifer. But now, let's head to the world's largest aquifer. This is the Great Artesian Basin. The Great Artesian Basin is around 660,000 square miles in area and has an estimated 15,600 cubic miles of water. The Great Artesian Basin is what's known as an artesian basin, and this means that you do not need to create wells that pump water because the ground has enough pressure to pump on its own. Here's an image of the extraction of water from this aquifer, and this huge burst of water is just from the pressure built from this groundwater alone. And I think that is pretty crazy that the earth just has a bunch of water ready to basically burst out of the earth. And the Great Artesian Basin provides water to around 180,000 people and 120 different towns in Australia. And so again, this aquifer is vital to the water sources of many people. And, much like the previous two aquifers, there are environmental concerns. Mainly depletion and pollution. It is estimated that today, 1,500 megaliters of water is extracted from this aquifer. However, Australia seems to be managing this water better than the previous two aquifers we have seen. Australia has set up the Great Artesian Basin Coordinating Committee, or the GABCC, which provides advice to many of the areas and businesses that lie on top of the basin on how to maintain it better. Also, in 2020, the Australian Department of Climate Change, Energy, Environment, and Water created a Great Artesian Basin Management Plan, which today is helping maintain the water levels of this basin. Aquifers are geography that you probably don't think about often because they lie underground. However, aquifers are extremely important to our Earth. And so I hope I was able to teach you about just a few aquifers in the world that provide many people with important drinking water. See you in the next one.